water. So pretty typical Seattle weather. Uh, if you're not used to the Seattle weather, this is probably what I would say the average is like. I'm Oscar. I've been living in Seattle for my entire life, minus a couple of years when I was Gotcha. 
Well, I will tell you, while most of you have been there, I bet you missed a lot of stuff because there's actually five levels to Pike Place Market, which a lot of people don't actually realize. Yeah, I'm serious, yeah. Um, and so you can find just about anything that you can expect from a market like that, ranging from places that sell unique spices, to cast iron pans, even to the flying fish market, which is one of the big draws that a lot of people like to go see. They're really cool to watch them actually throw those large fish to each other. They're really good at the job. What was that? King crab, crab legs? Like the, are you talking about the restaurant? Yeah, I'm not actually entirely sure about the crab over there, but I'm sure that you will find it if you go looking for it. But you can also see the gum wall over there, which of course is one of the very infamous attractions at the market. It's a little bit more of a unique attraction, just a wall covered in people's gum. Uh, however, they did have to remove about two tons of that gum previously because it was starting to bring all of the bricks down off of the wall because it weighs so much. Uh, but definitely a cool sight to see. But moving away from Pike Place, I'm going to point out this building that's just off the right hand side here with kind of the beige siding, the big red E on top. This is the infamous Edgewater Hotel. And this is the hotel with more history than any other hotel in all of Seattle. There's a couple of reasons. Hey, that. what's up? <laughs> uh, you can give them a wave if you want. They were yelling at us. They seem friendly. Yes. <laughs> uh, the Edgewater is famous for a couple of reasons. First of all, it was built in 1962 for the Seattle World's Fair. Now, we expected around 9 million visitors to come to the fair in that time, and the Edgewater housed exactly zero of them because it wasn't finished on time. They ran into a bunch of delays going over the pier like it is you see here, and because of that, they realized that they were kind of in a little bit of a hole, and they needed a new way to brand themselves to really get the customers now, but they realized that they were in kind of a unique position being built in the water like that. So they were able to open a fake capital shop in their lobby and be the only hotel in the entire world that you could fish out of your bedroom window. <laughs> now it sounds like it's a really good idea on paper until you think about being one of the guests staying on that bottom level there when you have an enthusiastic fisherman up on that top level reeling in a 15-pound salmon at 5 in the morning. It was not a way to call that a lot of the guests were actually wanting to receive. So they did actually have to discontinue that practice after a lot of guests complained about that on top of the nightmare that the housekeeping had to deal with of the fish being left in the room or in the bathtub. However, not before they were able to secure probably the most famous Space photo that you can find in the Edgewater, which was when the Beatles came on tour and they got that picture of all of them fishing out of their window, kind of stacked up on top of each other. And that was actually the cover of Life magazine that year. And so after they discontinued the fishing practice, that photo kind of brought their new brand of them being a rock and roll hotel with a lot of other people trying to follow in the Beatles footsteps and going over to the Edgewater there. Just off the starboard or right side, you will notice, of course, our pride and joy, the Space Needle there. This is the closest that we will be on the entire trip. However, I like the view of it a little better after we make our turn. We can kind of look at it next to the rest of the skyline. So for now, I will focus our attention just in front of it on the waterfront here. You'll see this little green area. This is Olympic Sculpture Park. And it houses some rotating artwork and some permanent pictures as well. The first one that your eyes will probably be drawn to is going to be the large orangish red thing there. That is known as the Eagle, and it's by Alexander Alder. And now that large white that face all the way on the right side, that one is known as the Echo. Those are both like permanent here at the Soldier Park. However, in my opinion, the coolest sculpture at the entire park here is actually the park itself because it's laid out in a map of Washington State, which 
which is kind of why if you notice the, the grass that's closer to us is a lot greener than up top. That's because the top part is supposed to represent eastern Washington, where a lot of the kind of environment over there is like that kind of yellowy dead grass. Uh, having lived there for years myself, that is pretty accurate. Um, and then the train tracks that go right through the middle of the park is supposed to be in the Cascade Mountain Range. Keeping it a little on theme with parks here though, this next long green strip that we're going to be following for a good bit here, this is going to be Myrtle Edwards Park. And it's named after a city council member that actually allowed Seattle to remain as green as it is today. When she was serving on the council in the 80s, 60s, and 70s, she was looking around at a lot of the other cities kind of urbanizing and turning to what she coined as concrete jungles. Now, she didn't really want that to be Seattle. She, you know, she was raising her kids. She didn't want yeah. her kids and great kids to be raised in kind of a gray environment. So she Shut set forth a law that states Seattle area walk outside of their house and within 10 minutes walk to a court for a green space. Now this remains true to this day and that is why we have most of our parts of the per capita out of the city. We're able to make great use of all of these parts because we actually have other dogs in Seattle that we have children and it's by about 1.5 times so we definitely make some good use of
We stand.
start with our pride and joy these days here, which was the Stoker Hills in 1962, just like the next one. Seahawk fans, if you look straight ahead, you see your home stadium of that uh, Little League team that you call a football team. Just left of those uh, big orange cranes out there. And actually, just right of those trains. Home of the Mariners. So if you ever come to Seattle, you can see a baseball game and a football game all in the same week. In October, that is.
Actually, you know what? Let me go downstairs real quick. Go Navy! Normal maintenance, but I did see how excited everyone was about the sea lions that we saw previously. So I'll point out just off the right, all along the security fence here, you're going to see dozens of them. I would try to count how many, but it is absolutely littered with them at the moment. And this is a lot more than we actually normally do see here, so it's very cool. But as my captain had pointed out, these are California sea lions. Sea lions. Oh, wow. And not Washington sea lions. Man, there's sea lions all over the place. The summer, the you look at the uh, net or fence, whatever you want to call it, right there in the water.
magic man claw with this. <laughs> Ships are huge, holy cow. Right, going back at top. Baseball stadium uh, where the Mariners play, but 
right there. Manners. Seahawks.
rear stairs, with the back of the car on the top deck, there would be the rear stairs at all, with the back of the car. Uh, Alright guys, that concludes this. I hope you enjoyed it. You guys see some sports stadium, some wildlife, beautiful buildings. Obviously cruises. When you come to Seattle, check them out. Cruise good. These guys are great. Narration is good. I recommend them. Like I said, check them out. Obviously cruises, one hour cruises, and also two hour cruises. Uh, this one's just a one hour cruise. The crew hour to the cruise takes you somewhere different. Okay, so check them out. Obviously cruises.